I'm Larry Graff and this is... Jordan Mint. I'm the media manager here at Aspen. And we're going to do a walkthrough of a pretty fun stage of an Aspen construction cycle, where, which what we call open hull. And essentially it's just before the deck sets and all of the machinery is in the hull and you can see everything there. And as we go through, Jordan, what I want you to do is kind of, I get kind of a technical guy, so sort of pull some of those, what did you mean, <laughs> as we go through. <laughs> And uh, then we'll also kind of just show you the deck setting on the hull. It's a pretty fun stage of the boat and quite often we'll get owners that have got their boats in construction to come and see their boat at this stage because once the deck is down, a lot of this stuff is much harder to see afterwards. So, kind of fun. Okay, so Jordan, here we are in the 40 foot hull. And uh, this is a 40 foot hull, but it's a 14 foot beam. So much bigger than the 32s. And it lets us just have lots more space and things, but it also means we got a whole lot more machinery in the boat. So over here we've got our generator. Um, this is a Kohler 6KW generator, diesel. Um, nice insulation, we'll get a better shot of that in a second. On the starboard hull here is the uh, Volvo 435. That's an inline six cylinder diesel engine. And uh, it's electronically fuel injected, and turbocharged, and even supercharged. You know? <laughs> so quite, quite an interesting motor. Um, and then you go forward, you've got paints and things like that. We're actually standing in the salon right now. And so, um, yeah, you would never guess. And then this is the state room here uh, with a fuel tank underneath. Uh, so there's so much of this that you, know, you normally wouldn't see. Um, and it's all available to look at right now. In the build process, the first thing we'll do is uh, basically what we're sitting in, what we call open hull. Um, and while this is going on, the next step, uh, or the kind of runs concurrently, is the deck is over on the other side of the shop here, and it's got the stainless rails going on, and it's got the lights and all the jewelry kind of going on to the uh, deck. Port lights are going in and things like that. Well, this team is rigging the open hull. Um, and then at a certain point, we kind of what we call, we fly the deck and it comes over and sets down on top. And, um, and then it gets pinned and, and drilled and, and fastened and then it gets fiberglassed on the inside. And then fairly quickly, um, we start building the interior components, all the different state rooms and um, things like that. So what's your impression so far of this? Is it it's big. <laughs> How long does a stage of the process usually take? Um, it takes, uh, open hull takes about two months, typically, uh, for two guys um, in this stage of it. And again, there's a couple of guys over working on the deck. And then always we have another boat working too, where it's in final stages. So there's certain guys in the team that do special things. Okay, so Jordan, in this engine room, there's some pretty fun things. There's hatches on the finished boat that are over this whole area. Um, but all the hatches are removable and the gutters are removable too. So if we ever actually had to take the engine out, we can. Um, as you know, when you get out there and you're playing with the boat and using it, um, all the things that you need access to, you know, on a regular basis are really easy. There's a hatch right here that opens. So right here you've got your dipstick, your raw rotter strainer, um, you know, your oil in is right here, your antifreeze is right here, all your engine belts are right here. So Phenomenally easy service. Even the oil filters, when you have to change the oil, Jordan, it's right there, pretty easy. Um, over on this edge right here are some of the battery switches for the engine and the thrusters and things like that. Again, really easy access um, throughout. Uh, but yeah, super nice access for the engine, the way we've installed this. And you'll notice that I can actually stand here on a nice big flat floor. So a lot of the engine rooms you'll get kind of an uneven surface and, uh, and it's awkward to stand on. I hated that so we actually made a fiberglass floor for right here where you're in the engine room. Um, over on the starboard side here are a lot of the different pumps and things that you'll need to, you know, as time goes on. So um, you can see that you've got a, a fresh water pump here. Um, this is a raw water wash down pump another fresh water pump. Um, so all of those are easy access. I mean, beautifully easy access. Um, this is a raw water strainer here for an air conditioner unit. Again, all super easy to get to. Um, if you look here, there's double hose clamps on everything um, that we've done or that we're finished with. Those items that don't have double hose clamps will get double hose clamps before um, the boat finishes. You can also see how all the plumbing is supported nicely along the side. 
you know, every few inches, there's a nice strap that supports it. So over on this corner, you can kind of see some of the details that the guys have done. Um, these are um, hydraulic steering lines, and you can see there's shutoff valves here, and then this will get plugged, in, plugged into um, our autopilot pump, which then runs the hydraulic ram for the rudder that's not quite here yet. So, um, yeah, again, really nicely done, supported beautifully. All these surfaces have been um, base coated, and then we um, overcoat them with a clear enamel too. So you notice how a lot of engine rooms will get dirty and you can't even clean them because the surface was porous. By clear coating it with enamel, um, for, it always can be cleaned up nicely like brand new. So um, yeah, anything you see here, questions? I just see easy maintenance and from that a lot of security. Yeah. I like that. Good, good. So here I'm in uh, the starboard hull, um, and I'm actually standing in an area that will eventually become the queen size bed um, in the guest stateroom. But some of the things that you don't see when the boat's done is like, look at this bulkhead here. This thing is huge. It's an inch and a half thick. It's over wrapped with glass. It's made with Kusa composite, um, super strong. And it's basically a huge beam that flows up into the deck, flows across the top of the uh, um, tunnel down into the other hull creates an enormous strong point right here in front of the engine. And then if you look through, there's bulkheads and beams all the way through this whole hull. And those are just incredibly strong. And yet this is a very light hull too. So the, the whole hull weighs about 4,700 pounds. So super strong, super light. And that's what we want. The bottom of the hull is in the impact area is two and a half inches thick, um, which is really important. Um, for the space that I'm at right now, the only other thing that's not here yet is the engine muffler will actually come through, the exhaust comes through here, or it comes through here, goes through the muffler, and then goes back out and out the back of the boat. Um, there's removable bulkhead pieces here that let you actually come down into this compartment after the boat's built, remove them, and you can get to the coupler for the shaft right here really easily. This is a crash pump here, 2,000 gallon per hour bilge pump emergency pump kind of a situation. There's another smaller one behind the engine and then each hull has three more crash pumps in it. Um, this is uh, the fuel tank in the starboard hull. It's actually the largest tank. This one's about 137 gallons typically if they get the expedition tanks, which most people do. Um, you can see that it's, uh, it's an aluminum tank and these are X, X boxed in so it's got baffles throughout. Um, this is the Wema sender that goes into the tank and the tank itself is V-shaped and the pickup goes to the bottom of the V and so does the sender. So you can actually pump almost all the fuel out of this tank. A lot of people have a flat tank and they'll put their dipstick in but you end up leaving you know, six or eight gallons of fuel in the bottom of the tank, which isn't really great. You can see that the guys have double clamped everything here. The hoses are all supported beautifully. And the tank itself is actually bolted to the bulkhead. It sits up on rubber strips that are glued into the hull and then the tank glues down to them. So there's never any crevice corrosion. Um, one other little detail with the tanks that we do that's pretty fun is where the sender unit mounts, instead of trying to mount it to uh, a folded sheet metal piece, we actually have a machined um, piece that's welded onto the tank that the center unit mounts to. So it always has a dead flat surface, which means that we can actually put a seal in there and never have any weeping or leaking of diesel fuel around the fuel tank. And that weeping is a very smelly stuff with diesel. I, I don't like any diesel in my bilges at all. Um, other things that are in here, um, <coughs> if uh, we look here, there's actually three batteries in this compartment. Uh, one of them is for the, uh, dedicated to the generator. Another one is dedicated to starting the engine. And then the third one is a dedicated house battery that ties in with the other house battery banks farther forward so that we have power for the stern thruster a little bit closer to the stern thruster. It makes that stern thruster run stronger and I like that a lot. You can see the size of the cables here. These are ground cables that are enormous. Um, and then uh, you can also see some of the uh, wiring and so forth here that we started to do really pre premium wiring. The guys get a bonus for increasing quality on every boat and um, they have to wow us a little more. And the detail here has just been incredible. 
Um, we'll swing around here and get a shot of uh, the ground buses here and the battery chargers that are here for these two. So Jordan, here is some of the additional structure that's in the boat and you can see these big beams and bulkheads and stringers, they're all made with Kusa composite, which is a 20 pound density glass fiber reinforced board material that we cut with a computer router. And then we overwrap that with glass and then it, and the glass ties into all the different hulls. It wraps through and wraps in. So these things are just rock solid. I mean, like battleship strong and uh, create an enormous amount of strength and still not very heavy. Um, and if these plywood pieces that we use for walking in here weren't here, you'd see these bulkheads and beams, you know, every 20 or 30 inches. Um, this is all done with an ISO-based uh, polyester resin, so about 20% stronger than normal resins would be. And, uh, and then we're real careful that we put a lot of glass fibers with it too, so that it's not brittle. You want it really super strong, and that resin does that super well. Um, you can even see here an air conditioning duct that the guys have run through the center of the boat here, but they've also added uh, a layer of insulation to it so that you know the cold air you put in on one end of the, end of the boat actually gets to where you want it. To do that, you have to insulate it. So uh, kind of the things that we do. You can see some of the plumbing started to go in here and run through uh, weep holes. And if you can believe it or not, we're actually standing on a waste tank. That's a, a molded fiberglass piece. And so you're, you know, when the boat's done, you're working here, it's all sealed, you know, it's that thick, but there's actually a big waste tank here, about 40 gallons of waste happens here. And then there's pumps to pump it out, which are back there, so. Anyway, and then this becomes a queen size bed and a beautiful stateroom when we're all done. Well, I'm curious. You said the bulkheads are Kusa composite. Right. Why not plywood? Why did you choose Kusa composite? Well, the plywood is, um, is plenty strong. But the problem is that over time in a boat, it's such a moist environment where it gets wet and dry, wet and dry, the plywood will kind of go away and it loses its strength. And the adhesive that holds the plywood layers together will actually start to fail. So plywood's also heavier. It probably weighs, um, you know, this stuff is about 20 pounds per square, you know, per, per four by eight sheet. Uh -huh. And plywood is a three quarter inch, is about 80 pounds. So way lighter wow. and, and still phenomenally strong. Uh -huh. So yeah, plywood is, is interesting. It's kind of the old fashioned way of doing it. There's still some builders that use it, but um, for the difference in cost in a boat this size, I think it's foolish to use plywood anymore. When, you, when there's these new materials that basically are permanent. This, this stuff, this boat, this hull should last more than 100 years. There's no reason that it wouldn't with the kind of materials that we're using. So Jordan here, if you can believe it or not, I'm actually standing in the shower and you're standing where the toilet goes. So there's a nice marine toilet there. Um, but look at the size of this. I mean, um, I'm 6'2 and I'm in my shoes, so I'm about 6'4 and I still have, you know, yeah, six inches of headroom here. And, um, you know, it's not tight at all. A lot of these marine showers are, are just too small, I think. And I'm a big guy. Um, and if we switch places, you can see how big it is for you. You can grow two feet. <laughs> yeah. You can see this all goes in at this stage. The other thing that the guys will do here is they'll actually fiberglass this liner to the um, hull. So it becomes really strong um, and an integral component of it. And the reason there's these shapes here is right behind this is another one of these big bulkheads. So throughout the liners, you'll see these rib pieces and there's actually huge beams and bulkheads that are hidden inside. On the other side of the shower, there's a great big beam there, another one right there, and as we go forward, you'll see all these additional bumps and we'll step into that area now. Here what we've done is we're, I'm standing in the shower, there's a nice teak door here, and now we've come into what will become the master stateroom. And this is huge, the thing is like 12 feet long, 14 feet wide, it has an island king bed in it. And underneath that bed, you never know it's there, are all these beams and bulkheads and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, even what you're sitting on is a beam that goes along the hull side here, really strong. And you can see the guys have laminated that together. Um, on the, on the uh, top of the hull here, you can see they've put in the aluminum um, backer piece here. So when the deck sets, it slips over this and will drill and tap into this piece of aluminum. Instead of having just trying to tap into, you know, screw into fiberglass, we actually got a chunk of aluminum there, so it's really strong. Um, this is also underneath this area here is where we put our AGM batteries. And they're underneath this floorboard here and in a real nice battery compartment and it has a ventilation hose to it. But again, these batteries don't outgas hardly at all. Um, and you've got your house battery bank here. And we do the house battery bank with um, 
four um, golf cart type batteries that are each six volts. And, uh, and then also down here is a 12 volt battery that's dedicated to the electronics. Um, and the, we pair the six volt units so that they're actually 12 volts. Um, it's just a good solid way to do our power. And the other thing is, is all these batteries are of a size that a human being can pick them up. Um, some of these companies will put in these huge batteries that no one can pick up and move around. And I'm just not a gorilla, so I try to use components that I can pick up and move. I, I bet you might even be able to move that, but I don't think you want to try that. <laughs> um, <laughs> this little compartment here has a beautiful teak door on it, and it has, uh, again, more of the electrical switching components there. Um, if you look forward here, you can see the thruster. And um, that has removable access panels to it. And, uh, and you can get to all these components almost just as easy as this when the boat's finished. And that's really important. Look at how beautiful all the wiring is done. Everything is supported perfectly. All those surfaces have been base coated and then clear coated again. So it'll look like this for many, many years. And I like that kind of tight, proud feel to everything we do. Mm -hmm. So again, look at this big bulkhead here. All the way across that beam, it's basically a huge beam that's two feet to three feet tall, and that just locks the hull in one solid tight unit. Um, you notice when we rock Clemens boat the other day, it doesn't wiggle or creak or anything like that. Uh -huh. um, even when you go through a huge yacht wake or huge waves, it doesn't do anything, and it's because of all the structure. That's why. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> so, so many details here, and you can see the wiring, how beautiful that's done. Um, this little compartment on the left side. There's an air conditioner that fits in there, and it's a 16,000 BTU air conditioner going in there. And there's another one that goes up on the flybridge. So this boat has 32,000 BTUs of air conditioning. Um, so plenty of cool, and if it's a hot day, you need that. And actually, down in Florida, where they'll have water that's 80 or 90 degrees, um, it, an air conditioner that's 16,000 BTUs in 70 degree waters have, doesn't have quite that much capacity. So that's why we go big on the air conditioners because you still want to stay cool. Here we're looking in the uh, starboard bow and some of the fun things here, you can see the aluminum reinforcing continues up through there. You can see the back side of our bitter end cleat and the big fender washers. You can see that we've put in a pie for future access to the wiring and lights that might be in the deck. Um, but the most important thing here is the nose of this is boxed in to this bulkhead and then we foam fill underneath it. So the first two feet of the bow of the boat is foam filled, boxed in with Kusa, super strong. And then the nose is also a Kevlar reinforced. So this is an incredibly strong part of the boat, but when you hit a big log in the dark, like I've done at 17 knots with a boat like this, it's nice to know that nothing bad's gonna happen. So Jordan, here you're standing in what is the anchor locker. If you can believe it, this is about six feet wide and a big huge bulkhead here. You've got over on the right hand side a anchor, uh, a, a cleat for the end of the anchor line. There's also a wash down spigot here standard so that when you bring your anchor line in you can squeeze it or wash it off. Um, this is again that anchor or uh, place for the uh, air conditioning unit. But I mean the thing is huge. I mean it is huge. This is almost another stateroom. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> you can sleep here. <laughs> okay, now I'm down in the port hull and the port liner, that's this white fiberglass piece. Um, this is one of the up loops for a bilge pump that's down in this compartment and there's a watertight bulkhead here. And basically anywhere where you've got a uh, bilge pump, um, where you've got a through hole on the side of the boat, you have to have an up loop so that spray and things like that run along the side of the boat, don't come back in and get down into the bilge of the boat. So the up loop is standard on all of the uh, through hole com components. Um, one of the other things that's um, not so obvious all of our wiring in the boats is uh, tinned uh, marine grade wire made by Cobra in Michigan. And every wire in the boat has one of these heat shrink labels on it that tells you what it is. So it's tinned marine wire made in the United States that has made in the United States electrical connectors. And these are the type, the marine type, that are about a dollar a piece. And you can see that when you heat it up, it actually oozes an epoxy adhesive about the back. It shrinks down. When we put the other wire in, we'll do that again. So all these electrical connections are waterproof and watertight. Um, and then everything is supported like this throughout the boat. I mean, just beautifully done. Having trouble with your wiring after the boat's built is a huge pain. 
and I don't want to give that to any owner. I want my owners, they're busy guys, they want a boat they can play with, not a boat they have to work on all the time. So tremendous attention to detail is kind of our gig. So here you can see we've got a shot, which this will all be hidden when the boat's done, but you can see that we've actually fiberglassed the liner to the hull. And um, you know we do that all the way along the liner. And then you can also look and see the big bulkheads. These will all be hidden with the cabinetry when it's done and you'll never know they're there, but man, on inside the cabinets is an enormous structure, which most people skip. And look at how close the spacing is on it. In this area of the hull, the boat rides really soft in the water, but what's really happening is the boat absorbs the energy and spreads it out over time. And to do that, to give you that super cushy ride and have everything be solid and last forever, you gotta have a lot of structure in the boat. These are Deutsch waterproof connectors, and um, again, uh, they have silicone seals um, throughout, and it's just the pro way to do it. Um, some guys will use a really inexpensive, you know, uh, crimp on type connectors you'd see in an RV in a boat. We hate that kind of stuff. Okay, so here I'm standing in what will become a stairway up, uh, kind of a companionway up to the salon. You can see the size of the bulkheads and beams here. Um, the lower part of this has already been laminated into the hull. We actually won't laminate the hull side until the deck is set because I don't want any wrinkles in the side of the boat. I want the beautiful smooth fiberglass on the side to look perfect and to do that you have to set the deck and then laminate these bulkheads in and we'll do that later. Here's some more up loops for bilge pumps. This is kind of fun. This is an access plate where there's a hatch in the floor that comes up and the, the yellow and gray pump that's sitting right there is actually the pump for the bottom of the shower. And so instead of putting it in the shower area where you'd never be able to get to it for service, we moved it into a location where you can get to it, um, you know, because you know, every five or 10 years, you'll have to replace that pump. And you want it easy for, for access in the future. Love those kind of things. Here I am in the port shower, uh, one of two in the 40. And this is a kind of a fun feature. And it's basically just a hanger so that if you've got gowns or long clothing that you need to hang or a wet uh, a rain suit, you can hang it here in the shower, kind of fun. Um, I'm standing in an area where there will be a beautiful teak grate that uh, covers up this uh, sump here in the floor. And that's where basically when you shower, your water goes and the pump pumps it out. On this side, there's a little cubby hole with a nice stainless steel rail that lets you put your soap dishes and, and, and uh, shampoo and stuff behind the rail and it stays put when you're out. Again, I'm 6'2", look at the headroom in here, really nice. Okay, so this is just a quick shot of the PEX plumbing that we put in the boat. Um, you can see, the, the, the reason we use PEX, it's a polyethylene type material. Um, can take tremendous pressures, lasts forever, doesn't induce any chemicals into the water and it takes the, you know, runs and bends around where we need it to go. We even use these nice uh, pieces that kind of hold it in the right shape um, so it doesn't kink in the bends. Um, and then we use these really high quality PEX fittings um, when they connect to the plumbing pieces in the boat. But no matter what happens, even if a customer were to forget winterizing his boat and the power went out, if it froze with this kind of plumbing, it wouldn't crack. And that's really important. Um, and then you can see how it's supported beautifully, you know, every 10 or 12 inches, um, just kind of the way we do things. So Jordan, would you, does it look like you're in a stateroom? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this actually becomes the quarter berth on our 40. And this is a really? twin bed here, um, really a nice big bed. And underneath that bed, when the boat's done, you'd never know it, but there's a 93 gallon fuel tank. And then I think it's about a 45, 50 gallon water tank there too. You can see these beautiful stainless brackets to support it. Um, and then this all gets covered with a, you know, a, a, a floor piece and then a beautiful comfortable mattress goes in. And then there's a filler that goes in for during the you know, nighttime when you want the bed to be longer. Some people don't need to use it because they're not that tall. Which <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, you can see the size of the space in this uh, quarter berth. Um, and then this is the beginning of our um, uh, alternating current or AC hub. And basically the shore power will come into this uh, area of the boat, go through these um, ground fault, uh, these are kind of whole boat ground fault receptacles. And then it, from here it goes up into a hub that, that mounts here. And the reason we do this this way is that the generator 
is right there. So some companies will have the generator back there, they'll have their AC hub way at the front of the boat, then they run the power back and forth and do all this kind of crazy stuff. To me, it made a lot more sense to keep right there. Right there. <laughs> yeah, so our, our power is either from the generator there, comes in through the deck shore power component there, comes in through this hub, and goes up into the breakers that are up above. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see it's a big space, and yeah, what do you think? Well, one thing I really like is that everything right here is labeled. Yes. So here we are, and I, in the finished boat, I'll have come down into what we call the port lazarette. And uh, this space here, all of this is actually a kind of a closet space that's part of that quarter berth area. Um, you can see the 11 gallon stainless steel hot water heater here. This is a pressure accumulator, so the water is very smooth when it flows out and you don't have any of the chattering in the plumbing. This is a uh, super heavy duty, oversized uh, macerator pump that lets you, when you're offshore, you can pump out your tank. But look at the size of the hoses. This is an enormous piece. So when you do want to empty your holding tank, it doesn't take a long time to empty it. Um, with that pump, it pumps about uh, 12 gallons a minute, I think. So you can pump the whole tank empty in three or four minutes. Um, so that's kind of fun. This is a beautiful generator. This is a Kohler generator. It's a 6kW unit. It's diesel and it runs smooth and quiet. It's a great unit. We love them. They've had no troubles at all with them. Great company. You can even see the details. The, the exhaust riser elbow here is stainless steel. Um, when you want to service the generator, um, all the things you need are right behind the single hatch, your dipstick, your antifreeze, um, your oil filter, um, the raw water pump are all right here behind one panel, which is real nice. Um, super easy access and a nice computerized panel here. Uh, I love these little generators. Just have had great luck with them. Um, then uh, underneath the generator is actually a waste tank. I always try to keep the waste tanks kind of away from things like this. Um, and when we have the waste tanks made, they're actually a roto-molded tank. We have them do them twice as thick as they normally would a tank. So they're almost a quarter of an inch thick and uh, they overbake that and there's a special coating on the inside. Again, for us, I don't like any smell. Um, the waste tank hoses that we use are triple wall Trident, made in the United States again. Um, very high quality hose. And all of those hoses run in PVC tubes through the boat so that if you ever have to change them down the road, and if you've owned a boat for a number of years, you know that over time, you know, eight or 10 years in, you're gonna have to replace that hose. I wanted to make it easy so the waste hose runs inside another PVC pipe on our boats. You can see some of these uh, PVC tubes here where we have cables and things running through. Um, they're actually, you know, cut through the bulkheads, lambed in place, the edges have been deburred. Um, the cables are running inside um, a, uh, um, a conduit and so, and chafe protected throughout. So really nicely done. Um, I'm standing again on a nice fiberglass floor that's flat. I hate standing on uneven surfaces when I'm, you know, in a space. Um, here you can see part of the water lift muffler for the uh, generator. These are um, some of the ball valves that we use. We use composite ball valves throughout the boat. So there's no bronze valves to interact electrically with the water. Um, they're all um, glass reinforced composite ball valves, really nice. Um, you can see how everything is double hose clamped. You can see the adhesive. So the hoses, um, the fitting gets a urethane adhesive on it. We slip the hose on, then we put two hose clamps on everything. And these are beautiful valves, really easy to use. Nothing to corrode. I hate things that corrode. This is another part of, once you have the first muffler for the, the uh, generator, then there's a second above water level generator muffler too. And basically the combination of the two make this thing run so quiet you can't hardly hear it. I like that a lot. Um, this becomes a great big uh, storage area for the customer. Another big giant bulkhead and beam. Um, you can see, you know, up loops for uh, uh, pumps and so forth and the, all stainless steel fittings throughout. And again, all these bulkheads are all over wrapped with, uh, uh, you know, glass mat and roving through the whole thing. So that's basically our open hull walkthrough right here. So Jordan, here we are with the deck for that 40 that we were just looking at. And the customers have picked all their, you know, features they want, what kind of windlass they want, and colors and things like that. 
But some of the fun things about the deck, you can see the guys have put this protective paper on everywhere. And essentially, um, in the build process, we'll do that because we don't want any scratches. You know, it's done beautifully in the mold, and so we try to protect the bottom rail in the boat. Um, there's so much that happens at this stage. You can see the railings here. These are inch and a half stainless steel rails, really solid. And some companies will use one inch rails, little flimsy things. They'll even use little fittings where they got set screws on the outside and screwed down rails. Our rails are bolted in from the bottom. We'll get some shots of that in a minute. Even things like the bow roller assembly here, that area of the boat is over an inch thick. Um, where that mounts, it has to be really solid. Some customers will put a big heavy anchor there, others will use one of the some wind makers. Um, you can see the windlass here. Um, this is a polished stainless steel windlass um, that is a thousand pound unit from Lumar. Um, you can see, you know, the controls for that are there. Um, when we put on the nap lights here, we'll actually put in a service loop um, so that 15 years from now when you have to replace the nap light, you can unscrew it and actually pull it up because if some guys make the wire so tight, there's no room to actually get the unit up and then it becomes a huge job to service the navigation line. So we try to think of those kind of things. Um, these beautiful surfaces that are in this fiberglass came right out of the mold. We didn't have to sand and polish that because our molds are really super high quality. Um, if we go on farther back, you can see some slime that I'm doing here. These are newfound metal cleats. I think they're much more elegant than the, kind of the old fashioned cleat. Um, and so they're great. And they come back through from the backside with two huge bolts. Uh, well, Larry, something I was noticing the deck trails, they're not the same size. Yeah, what the story there was is in talking with the wives during, you know, kind of the initial design phases, um, they wanted at least one deck trail, one space to walk forward that was really comfortable. And I didn't really want to take all that deck trail space, you know, which basically removes space from inside the boat. I wanted one side that was easy to walk forward on and the other one where you could still walk on it, but it wasn't quite as spacious, I guess. And normally you're just trying to get to the bow for the anchor anyway, so you can choose which side you're gonna go up on. If we come back here, you can get a picture of the size of this back deck on this boat. It's enormous. And all of these hatches give you beautiful access to things down below. Um, that little hatch there gives you light and fresh air into the queen size berth. And um, this is a seat here that lifts up and, uh, and it has, the, when the hull is here, it makes an enormous storage area underneath the seat. And then on the deck or the swim platform, there's another bustle storage area here for the things that go in the dinghy. And then this is a nice walkway to let you, you know, kind of step from the swim platform into the back cockpit. Inside the laminate there where those hinges go, we've actually put in an aluminum plate that's about two inches by uh, six inches that is a quarter of an inch thick. So when we screw those fasteners in, we're drilling and tapping into an aluminum plate there that was put in in lamination. Um, all of these hatches are removable. Um, if you ever had to take the engine out, take the hinges off, um, the hatches come out and the gutters underneath are removable as well. So, you know, really easy access for major service. Mm -hmm. Always trying to think ahead and what's good for our customers is, is kind of what we're, you know, all about here. Here, this is a good spot to get a view for how this bigger deck trail is. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is where you get to walk forward most of the time. And even this little feature here, Jordan, you know, most companies will let, they don't give you a lip here. So when it rains, the water comes down the deck, goes right into the cockpit. Here, we give it a gutter, send it off to the side. Um, and again, you can see the size of the rails. Let's go inside for a second and get some pictures of uh, the hardware from the inside. So Larry, what am I looking at here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting because this part of the boat is, we saw the big stainless rails on the top side, but what's here is there's a piece of Kusa composite here that makes this part of the boat about an inch and a quarter thick, and it's all wrapped with glass. Then we punch a hole through, and the, the bolt for the rail is actually welded into the rail. We slip it through the hole, put a, a group of urethane adhesive on, put a fender washer on, and then another 3 8 bolt and nut, or a nut, actually. So, so basically, that's what holds those rails up so there. It's sturdy. It's really <laughs> strong, and look at how often, all the way along, really solid. 
Um, and every one of these kind of points where you have a protrusion or a hole through the deck, you always want to seal it with urethane adhesive. This is an aircraft grade urethane, so really strong, really flexible, nice watertight seal. Um, and it's 800 pounds per square inch in tinsel, so pretty strong adhesive as well as a great seal. But you can see the deck trail here has been cored, so when you walk on it, it's super solid. It's again, here it's probably an inch thick with the Kusa composites. Um, this is an area that the hull will slip in here and then we'll drill through and, and fasten this to the, the uh, hull. And then this will actually get fiberglass to the hull and deck when we get done. So quite a bit of thing, you know, a lot going on here in a simple space. If you look up this direction, you can see where we've come through with the uh, cleat and a great big backer block for the cleat. Again, all the adhesive. You don't want these areas leaking or dripping, um, you know, you know, at any point in the boat's life. So, uh, kind of, kind of fun. Another thing I think you can see here, this area here is going to get wrapped with a, um, a foam back vinyl and, you know, bonded in place. And you can see the guys have gone through and sanded it and then troweled through a filler and then over sanded that so that when we put the foam back vinyl on, we get this beautiful smooth surface. And, and that, you know, again, that beautiful surface on the outside means that inside we've done the work to make it flat and true. So, so many details in an Aspen.
Okay, so that kind of wraps up our uh, tour of the open hull and deck set. Um, you know, the guys finished that deck and it dropped on today and uh, kind of wraps up what we wanted to show you guys. Well, Larry, I certainly learned a lot today and I'm sure our viewers did too. But if you want to learn more, just visit aspenpowercatamarans.com or if you want to schedule a personal tour, yes, <laughs> please call. Thanks. <laughs>